Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there, it's Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. You're watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. We're going to have a great show today. Dr. Greg Hanslicek from the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory is going to join me to talk about bovine leukosis virus. Stay tuned and enjoy the show. Jason Lewis, I work here on Division Ranch, uh, north of Strong City, Kansas. We run 500 head of mama cows. We started using Multimin about a year ago. We didn't have any problem with health that year. Didn't have to doctor near as many in that pasture. Just the overall appearance was a lot better. And I liked it so well, we'll start using it on everything. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normice and LA, Normectrum Plus, 1% and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Greg Hanslicek, who is the Production Animal Field Investigation Director here for the Veterinary Diagnostic mm -hmm. Laboratory. Great to have you on the show. Glad to be here, Dan. You got to have a fun job doing kind of the, what I'd term the CSI uh, investigations where you're going out and we have a case and you're working with veterinarians and producers and, and, and pathologists and trying to come up with an answer as to why we might be having an issue on a farm. That's exactly what it is and it, it's a blast. It's a blast working with uh, Kansas producers and veterinarians and then interacting our pathologists and our specialists to, to be a part of the problem solving team. You bet, and today we're going to talk about something that's pretty big, bovine leukosis virus. And uh, seeing dairies and, and beef operations, what, what are we talking about with this virus? Well, it, it, it is a virus, uh, and you're right, it's called bovine leukosis virus, but some people call it BLV, some people call it leukosis. Uh, the technical ter term is enzootic bovine leukosis, so there's about 50 <laughs> different names for the same same disease, but it's a virus that attacks a certain white blood cell type in, in cattle. So, so this thing is, is viruses, from my recollection as a practitioner, and a, uh, how does it spread? I think that's a big question that people have out there. It is, and it's an important question. Because it attacks white blood cells, anything that moves blood from a positive animal to a to a negative animal, that's the way the disease is going to be spread. So give me some examples. I'm, I'm assuming bugs and yep. different things can... Uh, horse flies and uh, heel flies, are, that's one of the ways, but the, the major way is uh, needles. Uh, the needles, when we vaccinate an animal from a positive to a negative, that's a big uh, way it's spread. So uh, if we inject a, a positive animal and it gets, the virus gets on that needle and then we don't clean that needle or don't change that needle and use it on a negative animal, we're gonna... That's exactly right. Huh. Or tattoo pliers that aren't uh, disinfected between calves if they're tattooing calves, uh, gouging dehorners if we're not if we're dehorning our calves and we're not disinfecting those between calves. We have a potential so rectal rectal palpation sleeves. So what about nose to nose or you know uh, just cow to cow? No, it, it takes blood to blood. Uh, it is passed through colostrum, so there is a colostrum issue there. That's Which anything in the milk is going to be pretty much considered the same as in the blood. That's right. Although there is controversy on that, there's belief that the claw, if it's in the colostrum, it actually provides protection for the calf later on if it becomes exposed. Because the cow has been exposed and probably has antibody against the That's right. Meat. So colostrum, maybe, maybe not, but certainly any type of blood okay. transfer. Cool. Well, when we start to uh, move forward with this discussion, I think when we come back, it'd be really interesting to talk about the clinical signs, what producers should be looking for in their animals, different things that we see in the production site. You bet. We sure appreciate you watching Doc Talk. We're gonna be right back after the break with more with Dr. Greg Hanslicek talking about BLV. 
Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Marielle, a leading animal health company. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine where I'm joined by Dr. Greg Hanslicek, who is the Director of Production Animal Field Investigation here at the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory. And we're talking about BLV. We have talked about that it's a blood-to-blood -blood transmission. So how big an issue is it? What, what kind of prevalence rates are we seeing in, in herds, whether it's dairy or beef? That's a great question. Uh, the, the latest estimate was about 90% uh, of all dairy herds have at least one positive cow. Wow. And the, the, about 44% of all dairy cows are positive. Now on the beef side, the estimate is about 10% of all adult beef cows are positive for this virus. Wow, so that's the individual rate and, and probably, although we know there's probably pockets and herds that are higher than that, when you spread that across, you're talking about more than 10% of the herds. That's right. Probably being positive. That's right, especially on the, on the beef side, smaller herds have a tendency to have more positive animals because they more intensely manage their cows, uh, purebred herds and those kind of things. So you're right, it's in pockets. Right, so, so it's, a, it's a growing issue and it's something that's, that's present on nearly all dairies and, and uh, in a big population within the beef herd. So what, as a producer, if I want to know or I'm, I'm sitting out there going, hmm, you know, I wonder if I got it in my herd, what are some of the things that, that producers should be looking for or clued in on? Okay, great question. The first thing is that the majority of positive animals will never show clinical signs. Of course. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> that's, just, that's just the way it is, right? Right. But as animals get older, that's when we're going to start seeing the clinical signs. So in a cow, we're talking animals as they get four to five years of age, they will start developing tumors, basically, is, is, is what they're going to see. So let's talk about the progression and if, if it's tumors. So is this a, this leukosis virus, is it, is it somewhat that's, that when you're producing tumors, is it like, um, you know, what's producing these tumors? It's the virus effect on the white blood cells. So any place, the lymph nodes particularly, where the white blood cells are, are congregated, those start to expand in size. Okay. So really what we're looking at is the, the expansion or the destruction of the white blood cells at places that they congregate and these tumors are really just proliferation or damage to the white blood cells in these That's right. pockets. So and it's that, not cancer. Or well, it, 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 the they're, they're tumors, so it is, a, it is a cancer and one of okay. the terms that people use is lymphosarcoma, which means cancer of the white blood cell. Gotcha. So that, Gotcha. Yep. So it's a virus-induced sarcoma. That's right. It's a virus-induced cancer is what it is. So we're going to see things, you know, we see things such as the, 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 the eye bulging in these cows uh, due to this lymphosarcoma, uh, different things like that. Yes, that, that is a classical sign is a, is a cow that has, what I've seen in practice, is one eye that bulges out. 
a lot of times there's a tumor behind that eye, and that's just classical for BLV. I got you. And, and other clinical signs are they'll just have lumps, and particularly in front of the shoulder, in front of the, the back leg, and then if a veterinarian goes in rectally, a lot of times the abdomen is just full of tumors. Great information. When we come back from the break, we're going to learn more about BLV from Dr. Greg Hanslicek. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi folks, I'm Dr. Dan from Doc Talk, and thanks for joining me for our On the Farm tip. Today's tip is about metaphylaxis treatment of cattle for bovine respiratory disease. What the heck is metaphylaxis? Metaphylaxis is what we used to term mass treatment or mass treatment of cattle on arrival, and the actual definition of the term is treating cattle that are at different stages of the disease process that are all within the same group. So when we mass treat on arrival or use metaphylactic treatment on arrival of an antibiotic, it's important that you work with your local veterinarian. And the reason why it's important is so that you make sure that the drug that you're using for metaphylactic treatment of cattle for bovine respiratory disease is labeled for such usage. It's important for judicious use of antibiotics and important for the longevity of the products that we have and keep them on the farm. That's your on the farm tip today and thanks for joining me. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noramycin 300 LA from Norbrook, specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle. Noramycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noramycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. Hi, I'm Kevin Auctioner, host of NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattleman to Cattleman, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. This segment is brought to you by Double D Family Mat Shop. Injured livestock could mean injured profits. Protect yours with no-slip mats from Double D Family Mat Shop. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. It's Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Greg Hanslicek, who is with the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory and, and does a lot of production animal field investigations. We're talking about BLV. And so is there a production loss associated with BLV? There is. For those cows that, that haven't got to that stage where they start showing the tumors, we know it affects production, affects reproduction, uh, those kind of things. So we might effect. be seeing some open cows, uh, it, yep. you know, some, some things like that. So it's another thing that might be on our list of differentials when, when these cows aren't rebreeding. That's exactly right. Okay. Now, speaking of diagnostics, and speaking of biosecurity, what are some of the things that, that you would recommend to a producer once they find out, well, I've got some BLV in my herd? What are some of the things or, or things that we might do to prevent spread? 
Well, the biggest things are uh, change needles between animals. Mm -hmm. uh, make sure the veterinarian is changing sleeves between animals when they palpate. When they rectally palpate. Yep. And th there'll be a lot of pushback on that, but anything that a producer can do to reduce the spread of blood from one animal to another. So we're talking new needles, new sleeves, disinfecting dehorners, tattoo pliers, those kind of things will Fly control. Fly control. I mean, that's harder to do, but that's yeah. certainly on the list of things they need to do. So, so we're gonna. What about an introduction of new animals to a herd? Is is there something <laughs> there? I mean, should we test for BLV on the way in, or if we're, I guess, if we're trying to keep a BLV clean herd, right? Well, there are a couple tests out there, blood tests that'll that'll. Uh, diagnose BLV in, in incoming cows. And it's probably more important on purebred herds because right. it will affect their exports and whether they can sell bulls to bull studs, whether they're BLV positive or not. But certainly a blood test, either an ELISA or what we call a PCR, will identify those positive animals and, and then go from there. Always work with your local veterinarian to diagnose. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. And and so so we're gonna, we've, we've moved from it's in the older cows, we're gonna see the clinical signs. We may see decrease in, in some of the reproduction or conception rates. We're gonna change our needles, anything that, that uh, sleeves, anything that's blood to blood. Yep. Um, what about the bulls? Can they pass BLV in the semen to the cows? It's been known to happen and that's one of the reasons why bull studs want negative BLV uh, animals. You know, okay, coming in the bull sure. Stuff. But it's a it's minor compared to blood from animal to animal. Okay, but if you're bringing a new bull in, purebred bulls, are a lot of these being tested up front or not? Some are for those producers, those purebred producers that are that are concerned with how much BLV is in their herd. They're certainly testing, and so that's that's a great question to ask when you buy a bull. What is your BLV status? Good idea. It's got to be good for control, and especially if you're trying to keep your herd clean. Well, it's always better to prevent it and not bring it in than it is to try to clean it up after it's in the herd. <laughs> Great advice. Thank you so much for watching Doc Talk. After the break, we'll do a wrap up on BLV with Dr. Greg Hansenchuk. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This is Agriculture Today from Kansas State University. The noxious weed, Ceresia lespediza, has fast become a leading threat to native pastures in Kansas. Scientists at K-State are refining a new approach to Ceresia control that will encourage cattle to actually graze this weed. Here's K-State animal scientist K.C. Olson. The plant has incredible reproductive characteristics. One single plant uh, can produce 1,000 seeds per year. If we could treat the plant or if we could treat the animal that might graze the plant in a way that would eliminate the negative effect of the, the tannin toxin, we might be able to put significant grazing pressure on this plant using a domestic herbivore that has economic relevance in the Flint Hills. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batro 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. Now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batro 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batro 100, right the first time. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? The buses that get us to school? The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school? The books and computers that help us learn and grow? Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation that will build our future. 
A message from U.S. soybean farmers and their checkoff. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Noromectin line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University, joined by my friend and colleague, Dr. Greg Hanslicek, who is the Director of Production Animal Field Investigation at the Veterinary Diagnostic Lab. We've been having a great discussion on bovine leucosis fires. And, you know, one of the things when we were talking about not only on the show but during the break is, you know, BLV and causing these tumors, is this something that, that producers should be concerned about when they're sending these animals off to, to slaughter? That, that is a great question because, yes, uh, the, la the latest statistics that I've, I've seen, two out of every hundred coal cows is condemned or condemned after slaughter. So they're killed and then they're... Because of BLV? Well, the number one reason why they are condemned is BLV. So they've got the tumors that, gotcha. the, that the meat inspectors find. So when these, these cows are sent to, to slaughter, then the, they're inspected by USDA veterinarians. 2% are condemned. And the largest number of them that are condemned are due to BLV. That's exactly right. Gotcha. So that... When we were also talking earlier, you know, some of these cows don't ever show clinical signs. And um, so they could be BLV positive and, and going to slaughter. Is there a concern, a food safety concern, of bovine leucosis fires being present in an animal for, for me when I get that hamburger and put it on the plate for my kids? Another great question. There's, there's been a lot of uh, research that looked at uh, the potential for people either uh, consuming meat or consuming milk that was contaminated with this virus, is there a higher incidence of leukemia or, or cancer? And every research project that I'm aware of has shown that there is no association between exposure to BLV and human cancers. Right, just like a lot of different viruses that humans get that only affect humans or, or viruses that only affect pigs or bacteria or viruses that only affect cows, this is not then a zoonotic disease, meaning it's not something that cows transfer to humans. That's exactly and, and right. And cause disease in humans. That's exactly right. So, so uh, I think that's really important when we're talking about some of these clinical signs and the condemnation rates um, to make sure that we assure the, the public and the consumer that BLV is not something that's, that's zoonotic. That's right. You said they've even looked at it in, in dairy workers and, and people in, in, in slaughter plants and, and things like that? They have. They've, uh, they've looked at dairy herds where they were positive for BLV versus herds that weren't, and they followed them for 20 years. The, the people. The people, and yep. they found no higher incidence of cancer in those people that drank the milk and, around the, and were around those cows on a daily basis compared to their general population. It's just some absolutely uh, phenomenal research and, and great information. Yep. You sure provided us a great show today, and, and we're always thankful when we get to steal you away from your busy schedule to come on. I appreciate it. Thanks, Greg. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, if you want to learn more about what Dr. Hanslicek and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can go to the web and find us at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember, we always recommend that you work with your local practitioner. Again, I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine. You've been watching Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us, and I'll see you down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com.
Doc Talk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. The year that we administered uh, Multiman to the heifers calves, we discovered that those cattle were able to, uh, they were just a lot healthier cattle. And we just did not experience the, the uh, scour problem or other problems too. It just seemed like they were a lot healthier cattle. Well, we sure feel that Multiman has been a real value to this ranch.